10 years ago, we knew there were stem cells in the blood, but very little was known as to whether or not that cell type existed in other tissues or could be used to have an impact on a broad range of diseases. The Harvard Stem Cell Institute was formed. It brought together people from a wide range of different areas of Harvard where they could exchange ideas, we could identify novel means for being able to fund their work, we could ask them to really conduct their work in a very different manner, very collaboratively, and very much focused on ultimately moving this forward to have an impact on people. And today, we're bringing 10 years of discoveries into the clinic. They give us the promise of having treatments and cures for otherwise intractable conditions, things like ALS, hearing loss, heart disease, diabetes, some cancers, and even the effects of aging. Ever since my young son was diagnosed with diabetes in the 1990s, I've been working to try to develop a cure for this disease. As a part of that, the Harvard Stem Cell Institute has been enormously helpful. It brought me into contact with people I wouldn't have otherwise met or worked with, and they've been really instrumental in helping us make the advances we've been able to achieve. Just last year, we announced the discovery of a hormone, beta-trophin, which stimulates the body's ability to make insulin naturally, and we're hopeful that'll soon be in human clinical trials. This year, we're going to announce that we can now make, from stem cells, literally billions of pancreatic beta cells that make insulin. This is a huge achievement, a watershed moment in diabetes, and we're now working with bioengineers and biologists to find out how we can transplant those cells into people so that they'll never have to do finger pricks, not have to take insulin injections, and most importantly, not suffer from any of the complications of diabetes. I'm very excited about telling my children that that's possible, not to mention the tens of millions of other people who could benefit from that. I'd like to come back in another few years and announce that we now have our first results with patients. Ten years ago, we really had just this developing idea that uh, aging might not be a, a, an inevitable one-way uh, change in the body cells and tissues that caused a decline in the body's ability to repair itself after damage. And, and, and we really, over the last ten years, have, have gained increasing evidence so that we now uh, have a very strong uh, model that says that there are substances that are in the blood that affect the aging of tissues. We've identified proteins that are present when you're young and they go away as you get older. And we know that if you give those factors back to old animals, you can actually improve their ability to heal after injury. Uh, and so we're really starting now, I think, to understand how aging changes tissues and understand the ways that we can intervene in that process to support a more healthy aging and a, and a more robust repair after damage. Unlike most people at Harvard, I came here from industry rather than following a standard academic route. And I came here to pursue an idea which was completely new at the time, to study human disease using stem cells. Producing stem cells that can model the disease and using those disease models to find new treatments. Pharmaceutical companies rarely or never use human disease cells in any part of their drug discovery process. The disease I wanted to work on was a devastating childhood disease known as spinal muscular atrophy. It's a disease that's rare in the population and hence was not at that time of interest to industry because the market size was viewed as being too small. This approach has turned out to be very, very successful and we ourselves have made a lot of progress in understanding spinal muscular atrophy. So much progress that in fact industry has now become interested in this kind of disease and we've been approached by numerous companies now to work with them on helping them identify treatments for diseases like spinal muscular atrophy. Everywhere we go, the big question is always, what's next? Where is HSCI going from here? 
Every time we've had a new discovery, we get that question. But where do we want to be a decade from now? In the clinic, of course, no question, back to your home in the hospital. Our goal for the coming decade has to be to move these discoveries into clinical trials. And from there, of course, into patients who need them. They're waiting for them. But in what areas? Well, I think we can promise that in the next decade, we'll be talking about how HSCI scientists cured diabetes and improved the safety and success of stem cell transplants in cancer, created effective treatments for ALS and Parkinson's, and actually made some clinical progress on healthy aging. And I think we'll have some additional breakthroughs. After you.